Who? Is that a one? Hi guys, I am here with your Bible reading. Hi Sandy, hi Rosie. I seen your picture late last night or very early this morning. Rosie. So cute, Sandy. Thank you for sending that to me. I think I forgot to like it. I'm sorry. I'm going to copy it and save it. Okay guys, so we left off yesterday in Matthew where Jesus um, got baptized by his cousin John the Baptist in the Jordan River. I believe is where we left off. Well today we're going to begin talking about you'll see John has been arrested because they don't want him spreading the word about you know Jesus saying the Messiah has come you know because <laughs> the king and nobody the Pharisees and you know elders of the law and the Sadducees the Pharisees they don't believe that Jesus is you know the Messiah he's the Savior and they don't want him stirring up a thing well things get stirred up that's <laughs> as you'll much later see but John's already in prison which later I'm not gonna tell you what happens it's not to wait but um it won't be in this part I don't think it'll be later on but um Jesus begins preaching Jesus when he was 12, I believe, his parents took him to the marketplace. They was having something there. And there was a lot of people. And um, when they was going back home, Jesus stayed behind, and they didn't know it. And when they came back in three days, find him. And they found him in the temple talking to the elders and teachers, you know, of the church and stuff, and about God. And his mom said, you know, why did you do this to me, Jesus? I was worried about you. We didn't know where you were. And Jesus said, didn't you know I would be in my father's house? And he was only 12 years old then. But when Jesus started his, you know, to get the apostles and really start going on doing his preaching you know trying to bring people to God through him and get them saved and stuff well I believe he was around the age of 33 I'm pretty sure he was around the age of 33 but let's get into it today we're going to talk about Jesus starting to preach and that will be in Matthew chapter 4, verse 12, reading through verse 25. Now, we go. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee, leaving Nazareth. He went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun, and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulon and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light, on those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned. From that time on Jesus began to preach Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near, just as John did. But John said he was preparing the way, which he was preparing the way for Jesus, of course. Jesus calls his first disciples. Do any of you guys know who his first disciples were? Well, let's see if you're right. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, because Jesus called him that, changed his you know, name to Peter. 
<clears throat> and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him, without even a question. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in the boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called to them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Something, isn't it? Somebody you've never met in your life. This comes up to you and says, come, follow me. And they know there's something so special about Jesus. That they know he is the one. They can feel it. And that they just drop everything and go. Their families, their jobs, everything. Sorry, my eyes keep matting shut. I haven't slept in like two days. Out of my medicine. All right, and we're finishing up Matthew today, for today, with Jesus heals the sick. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain and demon-possessed, those having seizures and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. Jesus did a lot of good, and this is only the beginning, only the beginning of what all Jesus has done. Just coming to this world, coming into this world is, you know, was torture for him to come to this earth, to have to be down here and live this life as a servant and I don't want to say, but most of you know, I'm sure, end up dying a horrible death in the end. I mean, being treated very bad. But he did that because he loved us. He did not have to come here. God did not have to send Jesus here. He could have easily said, be gone with the earth and all the people. I want nothing to do with them. They are a disgrace and just blow us all up. It would be no more. But he loves us. He considers us his children. We are his children. He is our father. And he wants us to be with him and reign alongside him as his princesses and princes, his sons and daughters. Just think how blessed, how blessed we are. Every day, if you think your life is going bad and you're having a bad day, just remember, you are somebody very special. Even if people on this earth say you are nothing and you're not going to amount to anything, you're no good. You're nothing special. You are special. You are special to the one who matters most. And that is your Father in Heaven. And you, my dear, are His true child, His princess, or His prince. And He wants you to take His hand so He can lead you home after your work here on earth that he gave you to do is finished. He will call you home. See, you are very, very special. 
and loved more than you would ever, ever, ever be loved here on this earth. I don't remember if I told you guys, um, you know, Jesus had a job. Um, before he started doing the ministry and stuff, you know, going around with the apostles and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, lost my breath, his disciples and going around preaching God's word to all these places. Jesus is a carpenter. And um, Joseph, um, his dad here on earth, was a carpenter, and he taught Jesus how to, you know, do carpentry. Just a little tidbit. Okay. All right. Our psalm today is Psalm 4. For the director of music with stringed instruments, a psalm of David. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy. When their grain and new wine abound, in peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. David loved the Lord, and the Lord loved David. God said of David, like I've said many times, God said of David, David is a man after my own heart. I truly loved David. And David truly loved the Lord. As you can see why God wanted Jesus to come down through David's line. That's how much he loved David. I'm going to add something, but I'll wait till the end of the video here. Let's finish up with our Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 through 23. Wisdom's Revoke. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. How long? Will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Repent at my revoke. Then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. And that was our Proverbs reading for today. Okay, what I wanted to add at the end was, when we get back to Matthew here talking about Jesus and I was talking about you know how much you're loved and everything how much God loves you when you grow closer to God by reading God's word and you know you can talk to God every day excuse me I talk to our brother Jesus and our father in heaven every day you don't have to talk out loud, you know, for everybody to hear and make a scene. You don't have to do that. If that's the way you want to do it, fine. But, um, 
God likes one-on-one -on -one time with you. And that's why a lot of people back in the day had prayer closets. They would go in their closet and pray. Because it would be like them and God, you know? But as you know, God knows what's in your heart. And He knows what you're thinking. So I talk to Brother Jesus and Father all day long every day in my head and they can feel you know what I'm feeling in my heart and like something will just happen and I'll be like I know that was you father you know all throughout the day you know it's just like I couldn't get through a day without them it's just like this life would be not worth living at all there would be no purpose for my life or for any of our lives if it wasn't for God. And when you get closer to God by studying His Word and talking to Him daily, He's not just God. He's your Father. And Jesus is your brother. They become your family, your best friends. It, they become your soul. They're it's hard to explain, it's just like the strongest feeling of love that you have for someone, that you love someone more than anybody in the whole wide world and you'd do anything for them. The love that I have for Jesus and God, our Father, and you could have too. And that they have for us is a million, million times stronger than that love. That you love that person more than anybody in the world and would do anything for them. I remember the day I was baptized. That day was the happiest day of my life. Whenever anybody ever asks me, you know, what's the best thing that's ever happened to you? You know, um, if you could say one thing in your life, you know, what do you like the best? I say my best day, my favorite day on this earth was the day I was baptized. When I came up out of that water, I just couldn't stop smiling. I just felt God. I just felt God all around me. I felt Him in me. And it just felt like He came into me, you know? And I just like staring at my pastor. And he's just like staring at me, smiling, you know? Like thinking I was going to start screaming or something. Because I had that just, you know, big smile and look on my face like, like you're just filled with so much love and you just you don't know what to do you know you just want to scream and shout or something and that was a wonderful wonderful day the truly the best day of my life and the devil tried and tried and tried to get me not to be baptized I was saved um, a little while before that but I always wanted to get baptized it was just a personal decision because Jesus was baptized so I wanted to be baptized as well and um, by no means am I putting on myself as the level of, you know as, as Jesus is but you know he says you know we should baptize and stuff and he was to show his love for God and I wanted to do the same and the people that know me know my anxiety and how bad it is how you know being around people and stuff and the devil tried and tried he kept telling me you know in my mind don't go you're going to embarrass yourself I got back, it was the baptismal pool at a, at a church. We, we had to go to a different church that had a baptismal pool. 
and um, I think it was in October, so it was cold. And they didn't, I guess, I don't know if they don't do it in a lake or whatever. I'd have preferred a lake myself, but it was at as it was at a church, a baptismal pool, and the devil just kept putting in my head, you know, you're gonna fall down them steps. You're so big, they're not gonna be able to get you under the water. Everybody's gonna be staring at you. It's gonna you're gonna be a big joke. Don't do this. You know? And I was scared to death. Scared to death. And I'm like Am I going to do this? I don't know if I can do this. But I kept telling myself, this is something I really, really want. I want to give myself to God fully. And I did not let that devil win. And I swear to you, you're not supposed to swear to nothing, God says. But I promise you, that's the best decision I ever made. And will ever have ever make in my life and it ended up being the best day of my life I just want to share that little bit um, in case you ever feel like giving yourself to God and getting baptized but I just want to share that with you my happy happy to stay in my life and how the love is that you feel for God and what uh, our brother Jesus and our father feel for you and how much they love us and if you want to grow closer to them before you get baptized that's all good and well as well or you can get baptized you can you know you love them and you get baptized and then you grow like I said you know come back here or somewhere else and listen to God's Word every day or just get your Bible and read God's Word whatever you prefer to do that's what I did I just got my Bible and would read every day until I read I read the whole Bible and I would just sit outside and read my Bible I'd sit in the house and read my Bible I'd read my Bible at the library I, I loved that one-on-one -on -one time of God I loved it. I just, when I started reading it, I couldn't put it down. But anyway, I'm going to shut up now because this video is going to be long. Sure, come check and see how long this is, please. I'm afraid to. Please come, come check. <laughs> so I know whether to shut up or not. Yeah. Which I'm sure I better shut up. Shut up. I hope it's not too long. If it is, guys, I might have to start making it over. And not say anything. <laughs> We're not making it over. Yesterday, I apologize. It was over 20 minutes. This, this is way over 20 minutes. What is it? 23. That's not way over. Okay, guys, it's 23 minutes. I am so sorry again, but I just felt like I had to share that with you. And I'm going to shut up right there because I can continue to go on and on and on about my love for God, God. and their love for you. So, as you can tell, I'm still not shutting up. So, I love you guys. <sighs> Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Talk to God tonight, guys. I love you. God willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. God bless.